Hi there everyone and welcome to Online Church. We are so glad that you are joining us today. And our weekend started on Friday evening already with our fantastic online youth and young adults conference. Our family had our own little watch party at home with our teenage boys and mom and dad tagging along. And that's the bonus of being online, right? It was a brilliant conference with exceptional ministry. And I'm sure if you tuned in, you were just as blessed as we were. Then a very big happy Father's Day to all our dads. You know, dads play an absolutely crucial role in the lives of their children and their families. And it's not an easy job. But we pray that you will be blessed today and that you will know how loved and valued and appreciated you are as a dad. Now, due to the new COVID restrictions that have been implemented this past week, many of you are back joining us online today after attending our in-person services in the building the last few months. Now, of course, we would all love to be at church in person, but we are very grateful that we can still gather online as the church. Amen. God is not restricted by space and time. And in the Bible, we read of many examples where God gave miraculous breakthrough to His people as they committed to praising Him even in the midst of their difficult circumstances. So today, whatever your life is looking like right now, make the deliberate decision that you will praise and worship God with all you have, giving Him the honor that He deserves. Let's hand over to the team. Hi church, it's so good to have you with us today. Why don't you lift up your hand and your voice as we worship God together. As I reflect, I find perspective, there in the best and worst days of his life, you were always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, and on the days the furnace finds my faith, you're the fourth within the flame. I don't need to know what the future says. Cause if the past could talk, it will tell me this My God is finished If He did it before, He could do it again So I'll trust Him with what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness In my heart's eyes, I can trust Him If it did it before, we could do it again. So I'll trust him with what comes next. Yes, my hands are safe.
so faithful, God. Lord, we can put our trust and our hope in you, Lord. No matter what's going on, God, no matter our circumstances, you're in control, Lord. We put our hope and our trust in you today, Lord.
There is no other name that brings salvation, that brings healing, that brings restoration. We lift up your name today.
Well, hi there, church. It's so good that you've joined us online again today. And, you know, I'm sure you can also give a loud amen to what we've just sung there, that there's no other name like the name of Jesus. You know, that name of Jesus brings hope. It brings healing. It brings help when we need it. And it's also the name that gives us access to God the Father, the name of Jesus. And on this very special Father's Day, we're reminded of the goodness of God and the faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. And uh, Psalm 103 is a, is a favorite for many people. And in verse 13, we read that the Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. You know, today we're reminded of the fatherly heart of God. God has chosen to reveal himself to us as, as Father. And everything Jesus did and taught was to point us to the Father. And Jesus showed him to be tender and compassionate to those who fear him. And so when we approach God, we can come to him out of relationship as his children and ask him for what we need. And, you know, church, I wonder what is it that you need from your Father in heaven today? What area of life do you need breakthrough in? Can I encourage you? Don't, you know, approach God as engineer, even though he's engineered the creation of the world. Don't approach him as doctor, even though, you know, the Bible says that he is the great physician. Don't even approach him like a school teacher, even though his word teaches us everything we need to know. But rather approach him, as Jesus said, as father, as one who is compassionate and tender and who delights in answering the prayers of those who fear him. Church, let's pray today and, and bring our needs before our father in heaven. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you are compassionate and loving towards those who fear you. And today we bring all our needs to the throne of your grace. For those who need provision, I pray that you would provide abundantly. For those who are sick in their body, Lord, would you bring healing and restoration. For those who are discouraged, Lord, would you encourage them. For those who've got a relationship that's not in good working order, would you just bring hope to that situation. For every need, Lord, for financial need, would you provide in those areas, Lord, for work and for business. We trust you for every need and we come to you as our loving Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, we ask and we believe by faith that you will meet our needs because you are good and you do good. We pray this by faith in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I want to also take this opportunity to wish all the dads watching a very happy Father's Day. You know, I think being a dad is one of the most incredible things that, that we get to do. And I've got four kids of my own. And being a dad to them is not just a great responsibility, but it's a massive privilege. And I've personally learned so much about God as my father from being a dad. I think we develop a new appreciation for His love for us when we raise our own children. And, and I really pray that today, on this Father's Day, as a dad, that you would sense the Father's love and His favor on your life, that you would know that God is cheering you on to become the best dad that you can be because those who call you dad, your children, they're looking to you, they're learning from you and they're likely wanting to become like you. So no pressure there, but it's a big, big responsibility we carry as dads. And can I also encourage all the kids and the moms watching to really go the extra mile today to show honor and appreciation to the dad in your house. Buy him gifts, treat him to lunch, give him a back rub if he needs one, but make him feel loved and valued because as dads, we need all the encouragement that we can get. I want to pray for all the dads in a moment and commit you to God. And, and if you're in the room watching today with your dad or the dad of the house, maybe just put an arm around him right now and uh, let's commit the dads to God. Father, I bring all the fathers in the house to you today. All those watching online, Lord, thank you that you've set us an example of what it means to be a dad. And uh, today I pray especially that every dad would feel loved and valued 
and appreciated. Lord, as, dad, as dads, we don't always get it right. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. But, but thank you for the grace that you show to us, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom that you give us. And I pray today would be a very special day for every single dad. Thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your favor and your blessing on every dad. We bless them today. We commit them to you. May they feel encouraged and may they feel that you are cheering them on today. We bless the dads of the house today in Jesus' name. And all those in agreement said, Amen. If you are on our stream today and it is your first time with us, a very warm welcome to you. We love having visitors and we hope that you will enjoy the rest of the service with us. We have an online brochure available for you on our website that will tell you more about us as a church. And while you are there, you can also leave your details if you like and one of our team will be in touch during the week. Now on Thursday the 8th of July, we will be starting our next online Getting Started course. If you are new to the faith or if you want to brush up on the foundations of what you believe, then Getting Started is for you. You can register for this course on the Rivers app or the website, or you can send an email to the church office. And then ladies, are you ready? We are so excited for this Friday night, the 25th of June, because we are having our online Sisters Magazine launch. So be sure to tune in with your girlfriends for a great online evening at Sisters on Friday. And then the next morning on Saturday, come through and collect your beautiful new Sisters of Africa magazine right here at church at our Sisters drive through It's going to be great. So let's have a look at a promo clip as we get excited for Sisters. It's that time of year, sisters. The official Sisters magazine launch for 2021 is happening this Friday night. Spread the word and join us online at 7 p.m. for an amazing night as we get recharged, renewed, and refreshed with amazing praise and worship and a great word. Sisters will be online only, but you can come and get your copy of this year's magazine at our drive through here on our Durban North Campus on Saturday between 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. The Sisters Market and the Rivers Cafe will be open too, so you can get your hands on some great Sisters merchandise and a coffee. Remember, we'll be cashless on that day, so make sure you've downloaded Snapscan before you leave home. We can't wait to see your faces, so mark it in your diaries and we'll see you this weekend. Well, as I'm sure you heard earlier this week, the president announced further restrictions to church gatherings, reducing it to only 50. And uh, that means that we're unable to open until further notice. You know, with the amount of staff and volunteers required to run a service, we just can't make it work for only 50 people. So we will be running online only for the next while. And I'm really trusting that it's not going to be too long until we reopen. Uh, we obviously need to ride out this third wave as the infections have spiked significantly. But we'll keep you updated. And as soon as we're allowed to increase our numbers, uh, we'll be opening up again. Today, we also have a very special guest speaker who's going to be bringing the word. And Pastor Andre is going to introduce him shortly. Uh, he's someone who has spoken live on our Durban campus a few years ago. And we're really looking forward to that. But for now, we're going to take a few moments to focus on our giving. And I want to read to you uh, the words of Jesus from Matthew 6 from verse 31. And Jesus said, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and He will give you everything you need. Firstly, we see from this passage that trusting God removes financial worry. You know, Jesus here addressed the thing that consumes most people, that being worry. And I think most people's worries are directed towards money and the state of their personal finances. You know, most people worry about not having enough money. People worry about how they're going to pay their bills, how they're going to pay their kids' school fees, how they're going to pay their bond or their car repayments, and, and on and on it goes. But 
Jesus said that this type of worry about money and finances is actually associated with unbelievers. That's what they do. Because when you don't trust God and your faith is not in Him, well, you will always worry about money because really you've cut off the source of provision, that being God. And, and, and church, it's important that you understand this. The less we trust God, the more we worry about money. But the more we trust God, the less we worry about money. And so if you find yourself constantly worrying about money, maybe your trust is not where it should be right now. But then secondly, we see that God knows the needs of His children. You know, Jesus said, your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And because He knows, well, He's able to provide for us. You know, God is not surprised by what you need. Just like a parent, you are not surprised by what your kids need. You know, you're not surprised when they outgrow their clothes or, or when their shoes don't fit anymore and now they need new ones. You're never surprised that they need to be fed every day. You're not surprised when the school fees account comes or when they ask you for money to go out with their friends. No, as parents, we already know these things. And so we make provision in advance. And as our Father, well, God knows the needs of His children. Everything that you and I need for this month or the season or for the rest of the year, God already knows and is already making provision available for your life and for my life. However, there is still a part that we have to play. And we see thirdly that when we provide for God's kingdom, He provides for our needs. Jesus said in verse 33, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and He will give you everything you need. You know, very simply, God prioritizes those who prioritize His work and His church and His kingdom. When we give to what matters to the Lord, He gives to what matters to us. And can I urge you, don't seek your own kingdom. Don't make your life all about you and what you want. Make the greatest pursuit of your life what God wants. In other words, His kingdom. Because Jesus said that when we do that, well, God will give us everything we need. And when we put God first in our giving, we never have to worry about provision. As we bring our tithes and our offerings into the local church, we can have full confidence that God will take care of all our needs because our giving is always a measure of how much we really do trust God. And I hope that you can say amen to that. Well, I pray that's encouraged you to keep giving to God and to always put Him first. And as we prepare our tithes and our offerings today, let's pray and commit our giving to God. Father, we thank You that You are the Lord, our provider. Thank You as our Heavenly Father. You know our needs even before we ask them. And so You've already made provision. And so today we bring our tithes to You, the first tenth of our income. We bring our offerings to You as an extension of our love and your faithfulness towards us. And uh, we just say thank you for all you're doing in our lives. Thank you that even in this season, you continue to provide all we need because you are the Lord, our provider. Bless your people as we give today. In Jesus' name, and all God's faithful givers said, Amen. Church, let's have a look at the different ways that we can give online and electronically today. Giving online is quick, easy and secure. Here's how. You can give straight through the Rivers app by selecting Give at the bottom of your screen, then selecting your campus and the amount that you'd like to give and you'll be directed to SnapScan to complete your transaction. You can also give directly via SnapScan by scanning the code below. If you'd like to give by credit card, you can also do so by heading over to our website and selecting Give online. Finally, to give by EFT, use the details below. Well, it's our pleasure today to have with us online Pastor Diego Mesa from uh, Abundant Living Church in California. Been there many times to preach, spoken in their Bible college and their weekend services. Pastor Wilma did a conference for the uh, girls 
And we just love them as a couple, Pastor Cindy and Diego Mesa, three children. They've been there for some 27 years in ministry. Wonderful campus that he has, uh, has developed there under the leadership of the Lord. And we're just so grateful for their friendship. And we just love being with them. They're wonderful people. He has had a miraculous healing from kidney cancer and has a wonderful testimony. But today he's bringing the word. So lean in, open your heart. He's speaking directly to Rivers Church. Let's receive the word and let's be encouraged today. Happy greetings all the way from Southern California. And we are honored to be with you today. I'm Pastor Diego, and I am honored. We love the Oliviers. We love Andre. We love uh, Wilma. And we've been watching you on all social media, and you guys are doing a tremendous job by keeping the church alive and keeping it uh, going forward. It's my opportunity to just share. Father, I just thank you for my friends today, all the way over in South Africa today. We are one body. We are one church. But God, there's a lot of needs today. And I ask that you speak to the hearts of every single person today as though this message was personally designed for them. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read you a couple opening scriptures right now. In Galatians 4 and verse number 4 and 5. When the right time came, God sent his son born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy our freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And then in Luke 9, 51, Jesus let nothing distract him from departing for Jerusalem because the time for him to be lifted up drew near and he was full of passion to complete. I love that. He was full of passion to complete his mission there. I just want to simply title one word today, just a simple message. My message for you today is just show up. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to be real profound today because I can't be. It's just, it's just show up. And I'm so grateful that Jesus showed up. I'm so grateful and you and I are grateful that Jesus showed up to this earth in the fullness of time. And I'm so grateful that he showed up to do the ministry God called him to. And I'm so grateful that he showed up on that day to go to the cross for you and I. Everything about Jesus is about showing up. And I want to challenge you today. Have you ever been guilty of signing up for something but didn't show up? Maybe it was a wedding, a funeral, an appointment, a date, or a meeting. Why don't people show up when they say they're going to show up? Sometimes we know there's emergencies that come up and the unexpected come up. But most of the time, it's just the fact that we get busy and distracted. Sometimes we're guilty of just being lazy and just being selfish. We may not value the opportunity and we may not put value on the person that we said we would show up for. What do you call someone who doesn't show up? You know, there's a legal term called absent without cause absent without leave, or absent without permission. It's found in the military, it's found on a job, and it's found in the court systems. Great story that took place. In 1993, there was a famous movie that came out. It's a story of a football player by the name of Rudy Rudinger. Rudinger. And uh, he wants to go and play for one of the most premier American colleges called Notre Dame. He is only 5'6", but he shows up every day to practice with the team. Every day, just shows up. Every day, just shows up. He's not the best at anything. The coach and the team admired this guy so much that on the la he, just, he was just a practice player. But on their last game, he was able to play, all because he just showed up. In 1996, another football analogy, American football. A guy named Vince Pampal in the movie called Invincible. All he was was a teacher and a bartender. But in 1996, the Philadelphia Eagles football team, American football, uh, had an open tryouts and walk-ons could come. And Vince showed up and he got a contract and he played three years 
for the Philadelphia Eagles. And today he's known as the oldest rookie at 30 years old to play the game. It's amazing what will happen if you just show up. Here's some quotes I want to give you. The first one is from Jeff Olson. Showing up is essential. Showing up consistently is powerful. Showing up consistently with a positive attitude, it is even more powerful. The actor and director called Woody Allen said, 80% of success is just showing up. Let's apply it in our lives. What if you and I as Christians just started showing up more? What does that look like to show up? Why don't we show up the way people show up like for Black Friday sales? They show up, people stand in long lines the day before for hours just to get a dollar off on a product. I'm joking, but they show up. People show up consistently when athletic games are going on, especially playoffs or your favorite team. There's usually not an empty seat in the stadium. What would it look like for Christians just to show up. Here are some truths I want to share with you very quickly and some examples that are found in our Bibles of people showing up. Number one, people that show up see opportunities that other people just don't see. They are driven by what could happen. They are driven by, I don't want to have a regret if I don't show up. They have this thing behind them. They're driven by, what if I I don't want to miss out on anything? That's why I want to show up. They're driven by an anticipation and an expectation and an outlook to value something. When you and I show up, they see opportunities. People that show up see opportunities that other people don't see. You know, we know that on Palm Sunday in the Bible, Multitudes of people showed up in Jerusalem. Then we recognize that Jesus was seen after the resurrection by 500 people. But on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120 people. Where did the multitudes go? The 500, you saw Jesus, you talked to Jesus, you felt Jesus, you experienced Jesus, you heard Jesus, but it just wasn't enough to show up in the upper room. You and I have to be people that are willing to show up. I remember my first job. My first job was at a Motel 6. And I wanted this job so bad. But I'd go and the manager say, we're not hiring. And I'd show up the next week and they say, we're not hiring. And I'd show up every week, every week. He said, you know what? We might be hiring. Great, I'll show up. Well, we're not hiring. You know what? I just kind of wore this guy down that one time I just showed up and I said, hey, it's Diego again. He said, I know, Diego. Listen, why don't you just come to work Monday? And I just kind of wore him down. My friends were so envious. How did you get that job? How did you get that job? Because I wanted the job and I saw the opportunity. Nehemiah rebuilded a wall. He was not qualified. He probably was not the most gifted. He didn't go to school for it. But he showed up in Jerusalem to look at the condition of the wall. People that show up are driven and think and know that life is not always about options. It's about requirements. Nehemiah didn't do this just because he felt like it or just because he was in the mood. And people that live by the requirement living rather than the optional living are not moved by a feeling Well, I don't want to. I I don't feel like it. Uh, I'm not in the mood. There's something within them that recognizes I'm required to be there. That's why I, I need to show up. And Nehemiah showed up because he felt like he was required to be there. How much would our lives be better if fathers started to show up in their homes? What if mothers started to show up in their homes and just didn't see it as an option? They saw it as a requirement. What if employees or employers showed up and saw it as a requirement? This is where God's called me, what God's called me to do. How about if we showed up as a requirement to take care of our health or to deal with our finances and managing it or just simply to have a good attitude? You know, you and I were kids. 
we'd say, that's my spot. Because some other kid kind of jumped in and we had to remind them that was our space in line or that's my desk or I'm, I'm next to play the game. We'd say, that's my spot. I want to challenge you today. What's your spot? When I was a young father, and I, I would always think about, I, I need to be a good father and I need to be a good husband because I don't want to be replaced because I did something wrong or foolish or, or got tired or, you know, uh, allowed temptation to get the best of me. So now 38 years and seven grandchildren later, I'm so grateful that I was driven by the fact that I just simply don't want to be replaced the next thing, at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. When you feel like giving up, I love this, still show up. When you feel like giving up, 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. Now, we know he's been in that condition for 38 years, the crippled man. We don't know how long, but he's probably been there a long time. And every time, as the story says, the water is moved, the first one that jumps in is healed. How many times was he rejected? How many times was he denied? How many times did he not make it into the water? But yet something in him told him, I might be next. It might happen to me. And he showed up the day that Jesus was there. What if he decided not to show up that day? He would have missed out on his miracle that took place. And sometimes you and I just simply need to show up when we don't feel like showing up. In spite of trying, in spite of rejections, we need to push back our fears today and the failures in our lives and the anxiety and maybe the past of our lives and the hurts and the insecurity. Whatever is trying to stop you from giving up so that you don't show up, you need to push aside. I think about when I had terminal cancer, stage four kidney cancer. My body began to get tired. Sickness felt ugly in my body. The emotional warfare in my mind, how I physically looked, but I just simply showed up when I felt like giving up. Every morning, I'd read 175 scriptures, healing scriptures. I speak the word of God to my spirit, man. It take me about 20 minutes to do that. Then I pray a 10 minute prayer where I spoke healing over all, all aspects of my body. I'd start with my, I'd say like something like this. My hair is healed. My skin is healed. My eyes are healed. My ears are healed. My nose is healed. My mouth is healed. My tongue is healed. My throat is healed. I worked through the whole body and it took me about 10 minutes to do that. I, I didn't always feel like it. Uh, I, I, I got tired. I got weary, but I skipped showing up when I felt like giving up. We all have excuses why we can't show up. We all have all kinds of excuses. Your excuses, my, I, I don't have no one to go with me. Uh, I have nothing to wear. I don't have a car. I, I'm not smart enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. Uh, I, I'm, it's too early. It's too late. You know, I love the scripture found in Luke the 14th chapter in verse 16. Then he said to them, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all things are now ready. But all of them with one accord began to make excuses. People that don't show up have all kinds of excuses. Now watch the excuses here. They all began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground. And I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I bought five oxen. And I ask you to be excused because I've not tested them. I, I, I still, another said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come. You know, those are kind of the three excuses that we use in our lives. Notice said the first one bought land or ground. Sometimes we let pleasure and leisure and interest stop us from doing what God told us to do are the priorities of our lives. The next one is I have oxen and I'm not tested it. That's our job. And then it says I, I have a wife and that's relationships. And, and look at your life. And oftentimes we are challenged 
not to do something because we use excuses that, you know what, uh, pleasure and leisure. I, I want to go, I, 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 I want to go here and I want to buy this and I want to enjoy this. And you know what, work, I, I got to work all the time. I got to make a living. That's why I can't pray, go to church or whatever God's telling us to do. Or relationships, my wife won't let me, my husband won't let me, my kids won't let me. You know, oftentimes, you know and I know, people that have doctorates in what I call excusiology. These are people that don't have AAs, they don't have BAs, they don't even have master's degrees. They have doctorate degrees in excuses. And there's a statement that when we excuse ourselves, we accuse ourselves. When we excuse ourselves from doing what God told us to do, what God's asking us to do, whether that's just simply showing up, we often can excuse ourselves from that situation. I wonder if Ruth didn't show up in the Bible in Boaz's field, does she ever meet Boaz? And do they ever get married and have Obed? She showed up even though she had the excuse. I, I, I'm not... I'm not a Jew, I'm living in a foreign land, I, I'm a widow, I don't have a husband, but she showed up anyways and didn't allow her excuses to get the best of her. Naaman was not going to show up at the River Jordan because he used excuses in thinking all the other rivers were better than that one. When you don't show up, here's a thought, when you don't know what to do, just show up. When you don't know what to do, just show up. There's a story in the Old Testament about the four lepers. And the Bible says, they said, why sit we here and die? Why don't we go into the Syrian camp? And let's just see what will happen. And I'm so grateful that they showed up because God did a miracle. He caused confusion to take place. The Syrians thought that there was uh, the enemy coming to attack them. And they left all their food in place, all their gold in place, and all their substance. And talk about party. Talk about enjoying yourself. That's what those four, four lepers did. And that's just a great thought to me. When you don't know what to do, just show up. Be in the room. Be in proximity. You may not know sometimes what to do. You may not know sometimes what to say. Especially how many of you and I have been around funerals or we've gone around someone that's experienced a great tragedy in their life and a great crisis and a loss in their lives. And sometimes we think we have to say something and sometimes you don't. Just be there. Because the, because the reality is, is that sometimes you're not just doing this for you. You're doing this for others. And that might be our motivation for showing up. Because we will say, I'm not going to get anything out of that. And I've already been to, uh, uh, I've, always, I've already watched a ton of services online. Or when, when we go back to church, uh, I've been to 100 services. Or, you know, I prayed a lot of prayers but we have to have that mindset that sometimes what we're doing is not for ourselves. What we're doing is for others. And if we really believe that our steps are ordered by God and we believe in the divine providence of God, that God arranges something, how do you know and how do I not know that God has assigned something to us to minister to someone, to help somebody, to get to know somebody, to meet somebody. So, when you show up, I want you to recognize something. When you show up, show up with something. When you show up, show up with something. Have you ever been invited to a, a potluck and uh, somebody shows up, but they don't bring nothing to the potluck? And then they take all these doggy bags and load up everything and go home with it. And that's cool. But when you show up, show up with something. Show up with your donation. Show up with your contemplation. Or, 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 excuse me. Show up with your portion, contribution. Show up. The, the little boy showed up 
on the mountainside. The little boy's lunch. He showed up with a lunch. When you show up, show up with something. Now, now the Bible says there's 5,000 men and excess maybe with children and wives or women. 15,000. And the disciples are told to go out and see how many people have food. Are you telling me amongst 15,000 possible people, he's the only one with food? Like right now, wherever you are, I want to ask you, do you have any Tic Tacs in your pocket or purse? Do you have any gums? Do you have a little, any pocket candy? Do you have any snacks or crackers? I promise you, the, the amount of people that are watching me right now, you've got something to give. So amongst those 15, I'm here to tell you, it's not, I, I want to think this way. It's not that the 15,000 or the 5,000 didn't have anything. They just didn't want to give it up. And it's the little boy that says, hey, I've got two little old fish and I've got some five bread and Jesus, you're welcome to it. It's amazing truth. What happens when you let Jesus borrow something from you? 12 baskets left over. When you show up, show up with something. David shows up at the battlefield. When, when Saul uh, is trying to fight against Goliath, king of the Philistines or the giant, and he gets a giant opportunity. And all the men, all the mighty men are hiding in a tent. He shows up with some cheese. And he shows up in his back pocket, just a young, young teenager, was a slingshot in his rear pocket. And he hears the defilement of this giant called Goliath. And he can't just sit there and not do anything. And you know the story, the God that delivered me from the paw of the bear and the lion will deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. He showed up with something in his hand. He showed up with that slingshot. And when you show up, Show up with something. Show up with your gift. Show up with your talent. Show up with your testimony. Show up with your story. Show up with your faith. Show up with your prayers. Show up with your tithes. Show up with your offering. Show up with your generosity. But show up. Have something in your hand to give. When you show up, show up with something. But number seven, when you show up, I love this one. Keep showing up. When you show up, keep showing up. How do you know if you won't be the next? Keep showing up. Don't show up with this mindset, I'm going to show up up till with limitations and restrictions. Have the mindset, I'm going to show up until. Until the manifestation comes, until the victory comes, until the answer comes, not up, up till it gets hard and it gets difficult and, and it gets inconvenient. Just when you show up, keep showing up. Mary Magdalene. Mary, Mary, in the Bible says, a few other women showed up at the tomb. They were the first ones there. The angel said, he's not here. Go tell the disciples. They go back and you know the story. Peter and John go to the, and they look and they look in and they, they virtually see nothing and they go back. But Mary also came back. A few hours later, she came back. And that's when Jesus says to her, calls her name Mary. and says, touch me not for I have not ascended to the Father. I want you to recognize she showed up the first time, but then she showed up the second time. And sometimes we just need to be people that not only show up, that we are people that keep showing up. Not for a minute, not for a moment, not for a season. I think about myself, or I think about this thought, what makes great players? What makes championship players? What makes legends, or uh, this term they call the GOAT, greatest of all time? Are these athletes and, and players that had a good play? 
or had simply a good game or simply had a good season. No, they are people that had an absolute great career. Let me give you some thoughts here today. The NFL, that's our, that's our American football, has a Hall of Famer by the name of Brett Farr. He played for the Green Bay Packers 297 games. From 1992 to 2012, he holds the record for the most times of showing up. Our NBA, our basketball league, a player who played for Los Angeles Lakers, A.C. Green played 1,192 games without being absent, without being missing, without not showing up. From 1986 to, to 2001. Then we have our baseball league, our National Baseball League. There was a player by the name of Cal Ripken, a great baseball player who played 2,632 games, a period of 16 years without missing a game. Whether you're that far, A.C. Green, whether you are Cal Ripken, just show up. Now, here's what I could tell you about all those three guys if I was to enter them, interview them right now. I would ask them, when you showed up, did you show up and your body was free from pain? They say, absolutely not. Did you ever have some form of tweak or injury or bruise or pain in your body? They'll say, absolutely. Did you always have perfect conditions in your life? They'll say, no. We just simply showed up. And sometimes the most courageous thing that you could do is this little thing called just showing up. And then showing up the next day and the next day and the next day produces this amazing career that's taking place. One of my favorite scriptures is Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse number four. If you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. It's from the Living Bible. If you wait for perfect conditions, someday, somehow, when I retire, when I get my marriage together, when, 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 when I have a perfect life, it's never gonna happen. You're never gonna get things done. In all these three examples, there are people that push through and there are people that absolutely showed up. They possessed a perseverance, a stick to itiveness. but I'm gonna use two other words and I hope they translate well. They just simply have a stubbornness in them. They're just stubborn people. <laughs> just, you know, take the day off. You know, you, it's okay not to come. No, there's a stubbornness within them. There's a little bit of a, an honoriness that's within them. And they're going to show up. I got to show up when I'm not at my best. I got to show up when things are not going right. Because something great just might happen. I don't want to miss out. I'm going to help somebody. You know, it's amazing how many times you could spray ant spray and ants still show up. I, I don't know how they do it, but they just keep showing up. And I think about flies. I don't care how many fly traps you put up. They just, you think they tell each other, hey, don't go there, don't go there. It's not worth it. But they just, ants and flies keep showing up. We need to have that bulldog tenacity. They're saying, they say that the nose of the bulldog is slanted backwards because it will hold on and it won't let go while continuing to breathe. And we need to have that bulldog tenacity in our lives, especially in the hour that we're living in, the season that we're living in through COVID. And all that's taken place to the pandemic. We're tired, we're weary, our lives have been challenged. Uh, we're isolated. Uh, we've gotten out of our rhythms. We can't enjoy all the things that we enjoy. But I want you to recognize we are people that are gonna keep showing up in our faith and we're gonna keep believing God and our dreams are gonna come to pass and we're gonna accomplish the goals and we're gonna have that honoriness, that persistence, that stick-to-itiveness 
that resilience, that diligence, and that stubbornness in our lives. And let me give you one more. When you don't show up, it robs God of rewarding you. Robs God of rewarding you. Those shepherds, I'm so grateful, showed up at the birth of Christ. I'm so grateful that those wise men, the story is not the same. Take out the shepherds. I'm busy. Thank you, but no thank you. Wise men, too long of a journey. How many months? No, no thank you. Christmas story is not the Christmas story without the shepherds who showed up and, and, and without the wise men who showed up. Again, show up with something. They showed up with gifts. And I'm so grateful when God challenged Abraham to climb up Mount Moriah. It was not easy. He's an older man. But he showed up. And God rewarded him. In all these examples where people show up, they walk away with revelations. They walk away with truths. They walk away with experiences. They walk away with the blessings that God has for them. And you just don't know what God has for you if you just show up. God will reward you. And at that time, he gets the revelation that God is El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. He experienced Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, thy provider. He experiences a ram in the bush. I believe with all my heart, as Abraham and Isaac walked up that side of the mountain, on the other side of that mountain was that goat. And if he stopped, that goat was going to stop. If he turned back, that goat would turn back. But he kept pushing forward and he kept pushing forward. He showed up knowing God's going to reward. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know how it's going to come down. But, but he showed up and he showed up and he showed up. And at that point of obedience, God opened his eyes and he saw the ram in the bush. His faith is elevated and God rewards him with something that will radically, radically change his life. I want to end with a couple stories today. I have a very good friend. Her name is Lana Vasquez. She graduated from the same Bible school as me. In 2001, 20 years ago, she felt like she wanted to go visit her friend in Thailand. It was going to be just simply a two-month visit. She wanted to get familiar with the mission field, get acquainted with the mission field. Two months turned into six months. Six months turned into a year. A year turned into a year and a half. And a year and a half has turned into 20 years. She's in Thailand. And she rescues children from the sex slave industry. All because she had the courage, not knowing everything, but to step out in obedience. And God has immensely rewarded her and changed so many people in that country, especially the lives of young children, that are rescued from prostitution or maybe some things that are greater, all because she showed up. Rick Del Rio, I heard this story and it radically moved me when I heard it. He was a man that showed up on 9-11, September 11, 2001, when those planes crashed in to the Twin Towers. Terrorists attacked New York, and it came crumbling down. He is known to be the first clergyman to ever show up. He would form in the next few weeks and months 200 clergy that would show up. He didn't know what he was faced with, but he felt the need to help these people that were dying, the policemen and the firemen that were rescuing people. I want to challenge you today to be like Alana and to be like Rick to be like all the other people in the Bible and show up. God, I pray today that people will show up today to the places that you've called them, to the people that you have called them, to do the plan that you have called them, and they're not going to be absent in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to me. Life and death are held in the balance. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you open your heart? God loves you today. He's not mad at you. He's not here to judge you. He's here to forgive you today. And give your life to him today. Stop running from God and embrace that there's a God that loves you that died on the cross. Or you say without a shadow of a doubt, I'm a Christian, but I'm backslidden. I'm not living for the Lord. 
If you're ready today to say, I want to show up in heaven. I want to show up in the presence of God. I want to show up at this invitation. Then say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I give my heart to you today. I believe you died on the cross and I will follow you all the days of my life. This is not a moment and it's far greater than a prayer. Jesus, I believe in you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Rivers Church. We love you and go show up somewhere. God bless you. Well, there we go. What a great word. Just show up. Isn't that the truth? And I just love Pastor Diego's ministry, his passion, lovely guy to be around. And I hope you enjoyed the word and you received. If you responded in the altar call today, go online and click on the salvation button and get some guidance with how to walk with God. If you made a recommitment, stick to that commitment and follow through, show up. When church opens again, show up. Let's, let's do what we can and let God work in our lives and so what a wonderful day we've had what a wonderful father's day let's not forget it's the sisters uh on, on this friday coming up sisters night launch of the magazine the drive-by uh, where you can collect the magazine on the saturday don't forget to tune in diarize it and we look forward to joining you online there it's going to be a great great night <laughs>